Hello, my name is Brian Kamanchik, and this is my first episode in my video series I'm calling My Journey in Game Programming. I've had a love for video games since around 1976 when I saw my first arcade game at 12 years old. About 11 years later, I landed my first job creating computer graphics, and four years after that, I was working in the video game industry at a company called ASCII Entertainment. Over the years, I worked for Sega, Accolade, 3DO, and Sony, always as an artist, animator, or art director. I recently retired from NASA, JPL, after over 10 years as an art director, basically doing the same thing. So I had spent all of that time in the games industry in art-related roles, but back in the 80s when I got my first computer, I thought I actually would be a programmer in games. That was my dream, to work in video game industry. My first computer was a Timex Sinclair 1000, known in the UK as the ZX81. It had a whopping 2K of memory on it. Not much of a game machine, it was black and white, no sound, and no joystick support, but I did learn to program in BASIC on it, and so I graduated to a Commodore VIC-20, which was more capable and had color, sound, and joystick support, but still didn't have hardware sprites. This machine was blessed with a 5K, and only about 3.5K was actually available for basic programs. You could reprogram part of the character set, the ones you didn't need, and use them as game characters, but they move in big chunks so they're not sprites and they can't pass over other characters like a sprite would. I also owned an Atari 600XL with 16K and player missile graphics. Atari's named for sprites, and then Commodore 64. 64K, also sprite capabilities, were included in that machine. These machines were great, but too slow to program action arcade-style games. Basic. They only ran at slightly over 1 MHz. In order to get smooth arcade-like graphics moving around on the screen, you needed to program them in assembly language, otherwise known as machine code, and I couldn't wrap my head around assembly language at the time, so I took the art route into games industry instead. So here I am, 40 years later, retired and learning to program games as a hobby. I started playing with Pico 8 on a Raspberry Pi back in June of 2020, and got the idea to go back to my roots and try to relearn retro hardware programming. If you don't know what Pico 8 is, it's a full game programming IDE with a code editor using Lua as its programming language, a sprite editor, a map editor, sound and music editors also included with a great community to back it. I'll leave a link in the description. When I saw a YouTube video called Making a Game for Five Different Consoles, Lodum Dare 46, I'll leave a link in the description, by a guy called Polymars, who ported his simple game to five different devices. That sounded like fun. Retirement project evolved into creating a simple demo with game elements, which I would go over in detail later, and seeing how many devices I could target using different languages and IDEs, all while learning to program. Thus, my journey in game programming begins. My simple demo is a Space Invaders inspired game like demo. I call it a game like demo because it's not really challenging to play. It's just a demo with the necessary elements that you would have to know how to do in a language on a system to make a game for that system. Those necessary elements are a controllable player that is contained within the play area. And the player can fire a projectile. The player can be destroyed with an animation and lose a life. An enemy that moves and animates that is constrained within the play area. The enemy fires a projectile at the player. The enemy can be destroyed with animation and the player's score would increase. Collision detection. Sound. And then we need to keep track of and display both score and lives. Also, it would be nice to have game states. So a title, maybe, for example, a title screen, a game running state, a game pause state, maybe a game over screen. Anyhow, I was lucky enough to receive a play date in May of 2020 as part of a developer test program that I had signed up for months prior. 
It's a small handheld gaming device that allows the owner to develop their own games for it using Lua and also comes with a subscription that will deliver games to it at regular intervals straight to the device. I'll leave a link in the description. Since I had been playing with Pico 8 and it's Lua based, I thought this would be the perfect system to start my project on. So without further ado, here is the first version of Invader, my first attempt at creating my previously mentioned game demo in Lua on the Playdate handheld game console. Remember, I'm on a journey to learn to program games. I'm not a seasoned trained programmer, so my code might not be pretty, but it works. Also, I'll go over some of the things I found missing from a bare bones game that are pretty important, but maybe add it in the future if there's enough interest. So anyhow, what you're seeing here on the screen is my Lua code in Notepad++ for the play date. And it's around uh, probably around 300 lines of code. Um, it looks like more. There's a lot of spaces in here and comments and such. But anyhow, I'll go ahead and show you what this looks like now on the uh, emulator. So this is the Playdate simulator. Um, that comes with the SDK and this is a copy of my game so far. Of course I immediately got killed but as you can see um, and as we basically stated before I have a controllable player that is constrained within the play area so basically I butt up against this side over here and I butt up against this side over here and I can also control him I can fire a projectile and I can't auto fire. I can't hold the button down and continue to fire. I actually have to let go of the button and fire. And I have to wait until that projectile goes off the screen or hits the invader in order for it to reset. So I can also have collision detection and I can, I can hit the invader. He's also firing at me and he can hit me. And there's a simple animation that plays and the sound. And I can also hit him with a simple animation and sound playing as well. And you can also see that their score is increasing as I hit him 10 points every time. And if he hits me, he takes a life away. There's only two game states in this particular game, and that is the game is running, or as you can see right here, the game is over. Anyhow, there it is running in the simulator. That's my first version. Um, another interesting note here is that the actual resolution of the playdate is 400 by 240. It's much higher resolution than what you're seeing here. I purposely um, made it look chunky and pixelated. Um, that was a design decision that I made for this. Uh, the invader would have been very, very tiny on the screen, and I really wanted it to look like an old um, retro uh, game screen so that was my that was a decision that I had made uh, um, next I'm going to show a video of it running on actual hardware and that's coming right up okay so we're going to get a look at it now running on the actual play date hardware you can see this nice little piece of hardware and it it has a crank on the side and uh, it, it looks sort of Game Boy-ish, only it's not backlit, and it, but it does have a very high resolution screen and it's a pretty powerful little device and very easy to develop for. As I said before, it uh, works in Lua and Lua is just a, a very delightful language to, to program in. So anyhow, there is that as another game that I worked on I may show later, but until then, this is um, uh, it's my invader. So there it is. I got killed immediately right away, just like last time, because I didn't I didn't put a start screen in here. I didn't give him any sort of leeway. He just immediately starts firing. But same thing. He's uh, basically bumping up against the edges. I can I can hit him. He randomly starts at another location and moves back up to the top line. You'll see that if he if he comes and. Uh, and drops down the line. So pretty much what you're seeing here is my goal for 
every version of this game on all the different consoles. I want to try to make it look retro and grainy and um, and it should have you know pretty much everything that we see here you know within reason and I may sometimes take advantage of the hardware capabilities and that sort of thing. So anyway there it is um, running on the real hardware. And I'm gonna let him kill me so you can see the game over state and uh, there we go. Okay, so we're back. That's what it looked like um, running on on actual hardware. And I said I was gonna talk a little bit about the things that are sort of missing from a bare bones game that might be kind of important to a game. And um, some of those elements are, and I'm sure I'm missing some things, but um, the ability to iterate, say through a table or a dictionary or a vector or, or an object in object-oriented programming in order to create multiple enemies. So in, in other words, if I wanted to have a rows and columns of um, invaders up there, like in an actual Space Invader game, you need to be able to, to have that ability. So um, that's sort of out of the scope for this. I wanted to keep it as simple as possible and try porting it to all the different um, hardware. And so that's what we're going to do at first. And then um, the other thing is two other objects or things that I was thinking about was um, some sort of AI. So, and, and to be fair, Space Invaders didn't really have any AI. It sort of moved back and forth and just fired so much that you had to try to avoid the shots and it picked up in speed and, and it made it more difficult over time. And then, and then another, another issue might be multiple levels. And again, most arcade games back in the 80s played out on a single screen, so that wasn't a big deal. And again, I want to keep this um, as, as simple as possible. So that's not really the purpose of this series, but I may eventually get into that as those are skills that I have to pick up and learn myself anyhow. So if there's interest, again, we may revisit that. Um, so I hope you enjoyed my first episode of my journey in game programming. If you did, please like and subscribe and leave any comments or suggestions that um, you may have that could make the, this a better experience. And um, the next episode, I'm going to be porting Invader um, for the Pi Gamer um, from DigiKey. And it's another little handheld device, but it's based on Arduino. And um, I programmed it in CircuitPython using the Arduino IDE. So until then, bye and I'll talk to you next time.